Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, give yourselves a quick round of applause for still being here on the last day. Thank you all for being here. I hope not to disappoint too much. Um, today, we just want to talk about... <laughs> thank you, sir. Um, talk about meeting rooms and how we can try and make them more user-friendly for the people who are stuck in them, basically. Uh, my name is Anthony Lovell. I'm Global Market Development for Shaw. Uh, I specialize in the conference and discussion systems. Uh, we're going to touch primarily upon that, but also some of the smaller areas as well. Um, as we've seen all this week, there's so much different technologies around, always trying to make things better for all of us around the, around the place. Um, we're obviously dealing with governments, with corporates, education, uh, a whole host of different people all have slightly different requirements, which is like the most important thing in the world for them. So how do we balance those different needs? Um, I'd like to ask a question. Who'd like a fight? Sit down. No, you're too big. It's always worrying when it's your own colleagues who are the ones who want the fight. What I mean is, who'd like to see some pictures of a fight? Because we like to think that our governments are well-behaved and sensible and our corporate board leaders look after us. But you know what? This is exactly the same as outside the kebab van after the nightclub. It starts with a bit of pushing. You know, other people want to get involved. What's going on here? Put that FOMO. Someone's going to trip over, start getting a bit of flailing limbs. Classic fighting stance. This man is obviously well trained and probably won the argument. The ladies can join in too. This is not a sexist organization. We want everyone fighting. Come prepared. Bring a loud hailer. Then you can throw abuse as well as throw punches later on. I do not know why that man is touching the other man's ear. I don't know what he's trying to achieve. I like the fact the guy next to him is just very casual, has no idea what's going on. Clearly upset, not sure why. Point to prove, it looks like he's throwing a stapler, but I, I don't know. Even more prepared, forget the loud hailers, bring hard hats. If you know it's going to kick off, come prepared. Darth Vader had to practice his death grip somewhere the first time. Maybe it was here, I don't know. Ah, Middle East, welcome, come on in, join the fray. I don't know. Maybe he was tired, too much fighting, have a lie down, not sure. These are all real shots from real governments doing their thing. Oh, missiles, excellent. I'd like to think they're protecting the goosenecks, not themselves, from the eggs being thrown. Nice tie. This is commitment. You've got to launch yourself from some distance to get on top of that pile of bodies. So fair play to that lady. I do have hundreds of these. I'm going to have to stop now, but I wanted to finish on this one. I'd like to imagine the whole... Uh, Brian? Brian, is, is that a chair behind your back? No, no, no. What are you going to do with it? Just putting it down. There are hundreds and thousands of these online. I, I can't guarantee that they're all down to having a bad user experience, poor audio, video not working, but it could be. So they're the things that we want to try and work out. So how do we avoid that risk? How do we get to this? This is a lot nicer. They hear someone's actually achieved something in their meeting room, and they're not leaving full of angst and grief. So first we need to know, what are we providing those solutions for? What is it people require from their meetings? Conference and discussion systems marry communication with debate and dialogue. Obviously, I'm from Shaw. We're going to talk primarily about the audio side of things, but we have to be part of the bigger picture. You know, everyone's got to play with the other kids in the playground. So how do people meet these days? Shit, how did that go on there? Oh, no, sorry, not Tinder. How do we meet as in physically in the room, not how do we meet people while traveling? How do we, con how do we conduct these meetings? Are there, if there are any SIs in the room? Any integrators? No? I imagine this would be a really tricky tender to match. Not a lot of hanging points. Yeah, you can have your video wall, but you know, no electricity for a couple of thousand years. So obviously we've evolved from the traditional forum. To be fair, lots of hipsters in sheets. I'm not so sure about that one either, to be honest. Lots of different types of meeting rooms. Where is it that we, we meet with our colleagues? With the opposition sometimes. Is it a boardroom? Is it a national parliament? Is it an off-site conference? Could it be in a courtroom? They have audio requirements as well. Who can forget the lovely huddle room, remotely tying into your colleagues somewhere else in the world? Um, all these things have very specific requirements. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to one thing. It's about communication. Well, that's audio, talking to each other, hearing the other person's arguments, sharing presentations, data, 
Maybe it is the video conference coming in. They all have this basic requirement. Otherwise, we're just wasting our time. And hopefully, we have gone beyond the talking into a tin can with a piece of string. So how do we communicate? We use our senses. For the sake of this, if we can just imagine we're not talking taste, because I think that'd be a little bit weird, let's just say we're considering talking. But, you know, we talk, we listen, we see each other, we see the information being given to us. Again, maybe we need to avoid, we don't want to smell too many people in the meeting rooms, but, you know, there you go. And if we can also agree that the touching element is touching the technology that enables those meetings, it's not touching each other. Otherwise, we're just going to get back to this sort of thing. And we don't want this, but I told you I had lots of them, so here's a couple more. There you go, that's touching. Slightly extreme, but there you go. And there's always the aftermath. So what parts of technology do we require? Obviously, again, sure, audio. So maybe it's a microphone, whatever the different variety is. As you've probably seen a few of my colleagues up here over the last few days, we've got a few different microphones for different applications. Um, it's choosing the right ones. But they also need then the speakers to power them. You need the DSP, the, the mixing, the equations, equalizers, video walls, nice big presentations. What are we putting onto that? Maybe it's live cameras, recorded content, the conference call. In some of the more complex meetings, you start then getting to agenda management. We need to start talking about voting, delegate databases. This all needs to be controlled from the multiple different functions. Translation or interpretation comes into it. Sometimes with sign languages. I actually saw a presentation the other day. There are over 135 different varieties of sign language in the world. Who knew? Annotation, taking those notes. Maybe it's getting the notes automatically from the recorded speech. So everything that's written down is credited to a certain person. It then needs to be recorded for archiving purposes, particularly for government. They need to know what was being discussed, by whom, what was voted. And live streaming, obviously, is becoming more and more uh, essential. But then there's a lot of technology. It's getting a lot of clutter. And it, even in this simple uh, example here, it's, very, it's not too long before we get to the whole, I give up. I'm getting drowned by this. I don't need this much grief in my life. It was difficult enough arguing with the CEO. I'm particularly interested in, from the audio side of things, the microphones, getting, making sure that everyone can be heard, every point is uh, put across clearly, like I'm not doing now. The note, taking the notes, the voting, the control of that, as well as then the interpretation elements. But to do that, we have to understand what it is our customer wants. It's no good going along and sort of saying, here's my shiny new toys, use them, they're great, thank you very much. It's what do you need? Asking people, what is it you do today? What works for you, what doesn't? Which bits would you like removed? If you don't have something right now, what is it we need to add for you? We can't all do this as a single point of contact, but again, by integrating different systems from different manufacturers, we can get towards giving the answers that the customers require. Now, we obviously think that the, the voice element through the microphones is the single most important part, because without video, unfortunately for you guys, you would still hear me. But if they don't have the audio, you'd still be seeing these scratch slides, but I'd be set up here mute. That might be preferable for you. It's preferable for me, because I'm drying up, but that's fine. So, but who are we then asking those questions of? It's multiple parties. It's no longer a case of going to just one person saying, what is it you want? Because you need to talk to the end user. Who's the one who's actually using that device every day? Often it's the IT side of things as well, because more and more often we're sitting on their platform. Technicians or clerks who are running it. Procurement, they're important. They're the ones who actually sign off on these things. So we need to try and address all of their concerns, whatever it may be, but also not make it too difficult. Because if it's too difficult, it then just fails. I love my dad, I love him dearly, but we don't trust him with the remote control for the telly. So make, keep it simple for the end user, don't confuse them. We need to be covering all these sorts of things. It should be simplistic, it should be scalable, it should be robust, we must have security in there. Transparency, the other things up there. Long-term objectives, you know, there's no point in putting something in, and yes, as a manufacturer, we'd love to sell you something today, and something else tomorrow, and something else the day after. But realistically, it's not going to work for you commercially, is it? So it has to have a long shelf life and give you a good return on investment. And this is a very brief overview of the sort of things we need to be asking of our customers for what they need to achieve. If we're having a bad dialogue in a room, you're just going to get a couple of grumpy people 
not looking too chuffed. I mean, look, does he look like they're having fun? It looks like a bit of a waste of time. Whereas with a good meeting, look how happier they are. Fantastic. Two pals, full of smiles, out in the world, without a care. And if we can't match those sorts of joyous smiles on their faces, unfortunately, we will be going back to this chap. And we don't want to do that. It was a very brief overview. It's a long day for all of you, or it's been a long week, but that's me. If you want to look at the pictures of fighting again, we can do that. But otherwise, thank you very much, and have a good rest of your day.